Hello! So, there's been a lot of interest in Japanese rifles lately, and a lot of disinformation and incomplete facts and old stories that go around still, so I thought maybe I would do a video on some of my collection. I've been collecting Japanese rifles for a number of years now, um, and I thought it might be kind of neat to go over the Nagoya Arsenal rifles for the short Type 99s, which was the standard production rifle for most of World War II for the Japanese. Um, and since I have almost a complete collection, I thought maybe I'd start with uh, Series Zero. Each arsenal was assigned a certain series number um, that they would go through in production sequentially. So Nagoya had essentially Series Zero, which was no series marking, um, up to Series 12. And these were made in batches of 100,000 rifles, starting at serial number zero and going all the way to 99,999. Um, so they were made roughly in the beginning of 1941. The, the rifle was adopted in 1939, but wasn't finally accepted until maybe October 1940, um, when Prime Minister Tojo finally accepted it. Um, and from then they started the long rifle production, and eventually short rifle production really kicked in in 1941. So these rifles really didn't come out of the factory in standard production until around that time. So this would have been one of the earliest ones. This is a zero series rifle. Um, this is a very early one. This is a four-digit serial number, so it has a couple different features that are kind of unique to the first um, this first run of rifles. So I figured we'll go over that and kind of look at them right now. So the first place to start when you're identifying any Japanese rifles to start on the left side of this uh, receiver, you're going to see your series mark, serial number, arsenal marking, and the final arsenal proof. So in this case, it is a no series Nagoya. So there actually is no series mark there. There would be typically directly to the left of the serial number. From there, you've got your serial number. In this case, it's 4912, pretty early rifle. Right here is your arsenal marking. So Nagoya, which is this symbol right here, um, which is like a stylized depiction of two fish essentially together like that. And then right here is a really nice example of the final proof mark. Um, it is a Na symbol for Nagoya. You'll see this on almost all Nagoya rifles in this spot. It's just a final inspector proof um, after the rifle was, was deemed fit for service. One of the other important spots on your receiver is right here on the top. You've got your Japanese chrysanthemum, which is the symbol of the emperor. Essentially, it states that this rifle is his property um, and it's being bestowed upon you as a Japanese soldier to use in his honor. Um, in the middle, you'll have your gas vent hole. A lot of people think this is some kind of sign that the rifle's been demilitarized or something like that, but it's just standard on almost all Japanese rifles from the, the Type 30 onward. Uh, the Type 30 and the 38s will actually have two vent holes. The 99s, they went to just this one right in the middle there. And then right underneath that is your rifle uh, model designation. So you've got the two symbols to the left, uh, which is essentially 99. And then the one on the far right is Shiki, essentially type. So Type 99. Uh, and that's how you'll identify um, what kind of rifle you have from the top there. Being an early production rifle, this one does indeed have its anti-aircraft sights. So they flip up essentially like this um, to help you lead an aircraft if you were shooting at one in like kind of a volley fire situation. So on the left to right here, these are 300, 200, 100 kilometers per hour. So if you thought your plane was going roughly 300 when it got to that point is when you would shoot. Um, and that would help you lead the aircraft. So these appear on rifles essentially from uh, series zero till roughly series six. And then you start seeing them kind of disappear after that. Another feature of an early type 99 is the monopod. So this will actually fold down like this. Um, it was essentially to help stabilize the rifle and maybe like a prone situation or something like that. Uh, in theory, that's what it did. In reality, it's kind of a flimsy metal. I mean, you can even see on this example that the wire is kind of bent already. Uh, so it, it, it did not work as well practically. And this is one of the first things you actually see start disappearing as the rifles transition to kind of the later war ones. So by the late fourth series, early fifth series of production for Nagoya, you're gonna start seeing this monopod disappear. The actual block that holds it in place right here. So this barrel band has essentially a small little block here that this screws into uh, that holds the monopod in place. This is like a small little spring that kind of keeps it locked up. Um, you'll see that pod band stay on until the fifth series, sixth series, and then it'll start to vanish to a, a, mono, or a, a rear band that actually has no attachment for a monopod. 
as an earlier rifle, you've got your full protected front sight with um, these wings on either side of the front sight to protect it. What's interesting is on these early, early Nagoya No series, they actually have a rounded front sight like that. You're going to see once we start looking at um, the later series that it actually is a more of a squared off look. And this is more in line with what the Nagoya Type 99 Longs looked like. Um, you've also got a full length cleaning rod. So this goes roughly this far into the stock. It's held in by a small push button right here. Uh, it doesn't screw in. There's a little latch that holds um, the cleaning rod in place. And once you push that down, you can pull it right out and put it back in. So one of the interesting features of a lot of early no series rifles and even some first series rifles is this different style of rear sling swivel. You can see it's a lot more spacious. It's not as elongated, um, a lot wider. Uh, a lot of people thought this had something to do with like cavalry rifles at first, but it's been recently in the last few years translated that this has something to do with releasing a quick detach sling, which is a very rare style of sling. I actually don't own one, but um, a quick detach sling that uh, you would take off to help expedite when you're wearing a gas mask, essentially. Uh, and you can actually see evidence that this rifle did have a quick detach sling. It had a large metal kind of point that would contact right here. And it was so big that a lot of times it would ding the stock in these areas. So you can see all that wear on the rear swivel there. That is from use of that uh, style of sling. And here I'll show you an example of a standard kind of type 99 rear swivel. So just to compare the two, here's your zero series example. And here is one off of um, a first series rifle that I have. So you can see that the two styles are quite different. Um, this is the one you'll see on almost all Type 99 production later on. This only appears on Nagoya rifles and only in the first, uh, the zero in the first series. And it's sporadic at that. There's no certain real range that you'll find those in. Like almost all Type 99s, this Zero Series does have the two-piece stock. So this one is a little separated, so you can actually really see the two-piece um, stock right there. You can see also that the angle of the wood grain kind of goes opposite of this. Um, it's essentially to help with like strengthening the wood, especially the toe, where you would be more likely to have cracks there. And a lot of late war rifles that use even worse wood than this um you'll actually see cracks or uh, pieces of wood broken off there pretty frequently so that's one of the bigger reasons why you have that two-piece stock another area that you'll see on a lot of these early rifles is that these have um two drain holes so you've got one on the side right here and then one right here on the bottom of the stock those were essentially points where you would want the water or anything to drip out so with this you got the dust cover right here that would kind of push gunk right out here and then from the bottom here you would just be able to it would drain out essentially so one other area to look at um at the stock is the bottom here on the butt stock you've got several proof marks that a lot of people don't even know exist here they might they're so poorly struck a lot of times they look like just dings in the wood but right here you've got a small na for nagoya this is like the final proof that's done once this once the rifle is complete your other proof is right here this is Re for Torimatsu, which is the factory that made almost all Type 99 Nagoya production. So on an early fully matching um, Zero Series rifle, you'll see the serial number in a couple different places. Um, on the very early ones, you actually will not have a number on the extractor right here. Instead, it's located on the top right here almost similar to how they did Type 99 long production markings for Nagoya. Um, later on, and even in this series, you'll see it actually marked on the extractor. Another location's right here on the bolt body. You've got the last three digits of the serial number there. With the safety removed, you can see the stem of the safety that goes into the firing pin body um, also has the last three digits of the serial number located right there. And that's pretty typical for almost all Nagoya production. For early Zero Series production, you will also have your serial number for your um, firing pin actually located right here on the sear. Usually, on, and even later in the series, you'll actually see it marked right here on the body of the firing pin. And that is almost typical for almost uh, all later Nagoya production. But the very, very early 99, uh, Zero Series 99s will have the serial number right here, almost just like the Type 99 Longs did. 
One of the other locations you'll see a serial number that a lot of people don't know is on the edge of the dust cover right here. So you got your three digit serial number um, and then a small proof mark right there. In this case, it's another re for Torimatsu. Uh, almost all original Type 99 dust covers besides trainer dust covers are gonna be serialized like this with a proof mark. Most, almost all repros I've ever seen are, they don't have a serial number. I, I think I might've seen a few over the years that do, but typically any original dust cover is gonna have the last three digits of your serial number right there, uh, especially on a zero series like this. Being a zero series and an early type 99, you also have your chrome lined um, bolt. So you can see the bolt face has a full chrome um, plating on there. Your bore will also be chrome plated. Uh, it's a little harder for me to get a vid uh, video of that but your bowler will also be chrome lines uh, on a zero series like this. And the final location for a serial number on a zero series is located right here on the bayonet log. You've got the last three digits. Uh, Nagoya kept this up until almost the beginning of the eighth series. Uh, once they switched to the front band, it's actually welded in place on like the later last ditch rifles. Uh, so this goes through series zero, roughly series seven, early series eight. Another quick thing to note is on uh, early Type 99 Nagoya rifles, like most other uh, arsenals, they use a three screw front band. So you've actually got one screw on this side. And then on this side, you've got your other two to hold it in place. The two rear screws essentially hold the um, cleaning rod retainer in place. Eventually they switch over to a two screw style band later on, um, starting in the fifth series, once they switch over to a new style of uh, cleaning rod retention. And as with other early Type 99s, you have the um, more intricate style of safety design. Uh, later on, this turns into a very rough weld. Technically, this is already a welded on piece that they um, did all this design work for. And as the war went on, you'll see that become a little bit more simplified until eventually it's just the weld itself without almost any work done to it. All right, well, hopefully that was helpful for people um, who are just getting into Type 99. So that was essentially an overview of a zero series, a very early one. Uh, what we'll probably look at next will be a first series. For the first couple series of Nagoya production, there's actually not a lot of changes that take place. Um, so really between series one and three to four, uh, there's only a few small things that will be different. So we'll probably cover all of the other uh, early Nagoya rifles in one kind of video to show you the differences. Once you get into the fifth series of production for Nagoya, that's when things start to get really different. And when the effects of the war um, on Japan and their kind of production and manufacturing really start to take an effect. And that's where you start to see a lot of changes where you get rid of a lot of the features like the monopod, the dust cover, um, your cleaning rod, stuff like that. So thank you for tuning in and hopefully you'll be back to see the next video on the series of Type 99s. Have a good one.